Hey y'all, happy Sunday, hope everything is going well for you and yours. This is the portion of the show where we let YouTube send out the notifications via social media, let folks know that the broadcast is getting ready to start. We'll sit here and we'll count down the next two minutes before I push that button and go live. If you happen to be watching this on replay, go ahead and scrub past this graphic until you see my smiling face. If you have any questions and you're joining us today in the live chat, feel free to go ahead and add those questions to the live chat now and we'll get to them in due course during this live Q&A session. So sit back, relax, grab a beverage, and we'll get going in about 30 seconds. Hey y'all, how's everybody doing? Hope everything is going well. First and foremost, let me wish a happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. It's Father's Day in the U.S. I don't know if any other countries celebrate Father's Day today anyway. I would imagine some have to. So, uh, how goes it? <laughs> uh, today is just, it's one of those days. I got to tell you, I've been working my tail off out there in the shop shed to get ready. And um, I've just kind of been a lump this weekend, not really doing much of anything, just kind of sitting. Yesterday, I worked a little bit in the morning. And then today, it's just been, I've been an oxygen thief. I haven't done a thing to earn the air I'm breathing. So, hope everybody is doing well. I see Jonathan W. out there in the chat. Happy Father's Day to you, Jonathan. Been watching your bandsaw mill progress. Kicking some serious tail on that thing. I didn't get to watch your latest video yet, but I will when I'm finished here. I've been following all of your stuff. Always do. Okay, let's see here. We Today is uh, kind of the Q&A on the shop shed. Um, and I've had some questions in the background. I knew the number one question was going to be why spray foam insulation so that's why i included it in the video um and i hopefully i i explained that well um i did make a couple of mispronunciations in there when i was talking about moving stale air what i was talking about was condensation um when you get warm air meeting cold air it doesn't matter which side of the wall it's on where warm air meets cold air, you're going to get condensation and that's moisture, which we have too much of here already. And that's what promotes rot within walls and what have you. And that's the reason for your plastic vapor barrier. Instead of saying stale air, uh, what I should have said was condensation. The, Spray foam insulation is the vapor barrier, and it is that thermal break that prevents condensation. Now, I don't have one of those uh, infrared thermometers that you can just point at and uh, take a temperature reading, 
but I can say anecdotally when I go outside and, and put my hand on the outside sheathing, it is very, very hot. But when I come inside and touch that same wall on the inside, it is ambient room temperature. There is no thermal transfer. So it is working like a charm. Um, I've finally got everything all cleaned up to where I'm ready to start hanging sheathing. I got to save my pennies a little bit to get the sheathing because, as you know, even though the lumber futures are down to almost half what they were at their high, the price of uh, materials is gone from improbable to impossible to, oh, are you absolutely kidding me right now? No way. And that's where we're at. So um, there won't be any sheathing going up this month. We're going to wait and see how long it takes for retail prices to catch up with the lumber futures, et cetera, et cetera. But they should be coming down. Uh, I have no illusions that they're going to be the same as they were before all this started. But um I'll put it to you this way. I'm not paying $70 a sheet for half inch plywood. That's just not going to happen. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let me see if we can get into some of the questions that we have on the shop. Um, get back down here. Um, let's. Go okay. John Morrow wants to know right off the bat what size is the shop? It is 12 foot wide by 16 feet deep with a man door on the as you're standing looking at the front of it, a man door on the left side and the double doors at the front. So I had to keep it under 200 square feet to avoid needing a building permit. And this comes right in at, I think, uh, 196 square feet. So uh, it's about double what I have right now. And there is a lot more usable space in this one than there is in the old overly glorified uh, shipping container I'm in right now. So um, let's see here. Go back. Up there were some more questions on the shed. Um, before I get okay, Russell Faraday, I'll get to your question in just a second about the inlay stuff. Uh, refreshing to see someone doing the job with attention to long term details. I have no illusions about that either. What I'm looking at is I'm 60 years old, if it'll last. 20 years, I'm a happy guy. I'm not expecting it to last a hundred years. You know, if, if, if I, if it outlives me, I'm happy. I just want as little maintenance as possible because I'm getting to where maintenance is a dirty word. So, <laughs> so it's just one of those things. I, I want to, uh, I want to, uh, work in the shed, not work on the shed is exactly what I'm getting at. Um, let's see here. I think that were all of the questions. Let's see. Um, yeah, people talking about, um, about uh, you may wind up paying 85 a sheet and $70, not bad. Uh, the thing about it is, is we are in softwood country and I have a plywood mill about a mile and a half away from my house. Well, the veneer mill is about a mile and a half away from my house. The actual plywood mill where they press the plywood is about 30 miles away. So you used to be able to go to the wholesalers and pick it up cheap. Well, those days are gone. Um, you could get various grades 
um, the same grades that you can get from the retailers and the lumber yards, but you could also get something they called blows. And that was where they were just unacceptable to ship. It wasn't delaminating or anything, but it had ugly grain, ruptured grain, knot holes that had fallen out, and what have you. But if you're just going to sheath and cover stuff up, a plywood blow was just fine. And long are the days when you were getting plywood blows for $5 a sheet. I know that. But 70 and 80 in some case more per sheet, that's just not going to happen. Not out of this cow poke. You know, I'll, I, I might pull the trigger at $30 a sheet, but that's no, that's not the other is not happening. I will find something else. And it's, I, I really want to avoid it. But when I look at drywall going for $15 a sheet, and I know that's expensive, but 15 versus 70 or 80, the plywood just ain't happening. So we'll see what happens. Um, I, I've been waiting on this shop for several years now. And in fact, um, I'm not even a year into it. I'm ahead of the schedule I had given myself, thanks to Martin at I Build Sheds. Um, I broke ground on this shop shed build last August, so I'm not even a year in yet. And I really honestly thought that I wouldn't even have the shed until November or December of this year because it's a large expense. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, let's look at some other questions. Okay, Russell Faraday is having problems with an inlay on a curved surface, and he's asked several questions along that lines about it. Um, pretty much, um, basically, toolpath settings cutting the male parts. I've been, since I saw this question come up, okay, disclaimer, I have designed a couple of inlays, but I've not cut a single one yet. I just haven't had time yet. And that's one of the first things I plan on doing when I get the, moved into the shop. Um, I'm struggling to remember who it was that put out a video, but they showed a technique for making this male, cutting out this male part in two or three passes. And there is a technique for it, but I'm struggling to remember who the heck it was. I'm in the process now. I'll have to do it after this is over with. But I'm going through my history and searching for inlay videos I've watched over the course of however long it's been. And next week, I will have at least a link for that inlay video. I can't guarantee I'll have it today. But by next week, I should have a link to this video. He has a very good process for breaking that pass, for breaking that male toolpath into three or four passes. And it works because he was concerned uh, about the same thing, about cutting depths being so deep that that first aggressive plunge into the material uh, is a bit too aggressive for his particular machine. Not only that, it can lead to chip out, especially if you have some very thin parts of the mail. But for the life of me, I can't remember who it was that did that video. But I will try to have an answer for you by next week. And I, I do appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Scott Mullock wants to know, how did I insulate the floor? This is something that I, I don't remember. I think I showed it in the video when Martin came down and built the floor. He got all of the framing for the floor built. Then I jumped in with... Um, foam insulation and along the floor joists, I put a piece of insulation 
uh, vertically along that floor joist on each side of the joist bays, then sat two inches of foam on top of that. Then we sheathed over the top of that. So I insulated the floor with um, polystyrene foam, two inches of polystyrene foam before we laid down the floor sheathing. And that's worked out well so far. Uh, I haven't had any issues. And uh, I don't feel any drafts coming up through the floor. The floor is not cold to touch on a cold morning. And um, I haven't got my flooring installed yet. But when I once I do get that flooring installed, I'm going to be sealing the floor so that there is a vapor barrier there. And then uh, once I get the flooring installed, that'll take care of everything. But I'm going to sheathe the walls first with whatever I end up sheathing it with. My The material that I mentioned in the video, I may or may not go with. I don't know yet. The price has to come down again because it, it took a quick jump, and, but it should be coming back down again. And that was mainly because of the, uh, the lumberyard ran out of stock. Um, Mike Mazalik saying, maybe Stephen Forsy. I think you may be right. Uh, I'm going to go over and check his channel. YouTube has been playing some tricks on me here lately. It is not keeping track of videos I have watched. And when I go into my history, I notice there's a long list of videos I know I've watched that are not there. And then those videos will pop up in my suggested without the little red line underneath indicating that I've already watched the video when I know I have watched that video just within the past few days. So, uh, but I think you may be right. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be, um, checking out his channel as soon as I'm done here and before your video starts <laughs> more on that pretty soon. Uh, let's see. Lewis Denton says the building is going to be so tight. You may suffocate. Um, I'm going to be putting in a decent heater and seriously decent air conditioning for the few, for the rest of this year, I'm going to be running a small portable room air conditioner. Um, but to give you a, uh, an example today, it's supposed to be 103 Tomorrow, it's supposed to be 105. Last week, it was in the 70s and raining. This climate does some weird things. So if you don't like the weather, just wait a day. It'll change. But yeah, we're supposed to have some very hot weather, which is why I'm, well, this is why I'm in the house right now. But that's also why I'm staying in the house the rest of the day. So um, yeah, we get some seriously weird weather here. Let's see, Jim Dockerell, marble floors? Yeah, no, not quite. I'm going with a product called G Floor. Um, I already have it. It's here with the adhesive, ready to install. Uh, it is a uh, sheet vinyl flooring with the uh, small raised textured coin. And um, that's basically for non-skid. It's so wet around here. If I went with marble floors, I'd spend more time on my tail end than I did standing uh, standing up. So um, let's see. Um, going back and looking for questions here. Uh, John Thompson, does anyone know of a program you can load a font into and it will tell you which one it is? If you are talking about an image that you find online or something like that, there is a website. Um, I think it's called what the font, but I'm not, don't quote me on that. Um, you might search for what the font. I, I'm, but there is a website out there that will let you upload a, an image or link to a image, an image, and it will give you its best guess on what that font is. Um, sometimes I find that you can't match a font 100%. 
mainly because the letters or numbers that are in the image, a font wasn't used. They were drawn. It's part of the artwork. So there may not be a matching font. So just know that going in there, it, it may just have been hand drawn or done in illustrator or something like that. There may not be a font. I hope that answers that a little bit. Um, yes. And Michael Mazalik uh, helps confirm it's called what the font and uh, it does work fairly well. I was surprised. I was kind of, um, I was kind of, he, uh, I don't know, kind of me about it. I didn't real, I didn't know how well it would work, but it does actually work very well. So, whoops, excuse me. Uh, Scott Malek says, sounds like a pool day. I didn't set the pool up this year. I don't have room. <laughs> I'm doing landscaping at the same time I'm doing this shop shed build. I know it doesn't look like it outside the shop shed doors, but um I'm I'm working on it, you know. It's 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 getting better. Uh let's see. I'm trying to see if we have any other questions here. If you have any questions at all, uh feel free to throw them into the com uh, into the chat right now. Um while I'm cruising here looking for uh, questions, uh, I do want to remind you that this afternoon, Michael Mazalix has got a little bit different video this time. And this is what I mean by this guy is a serious, serious artist, okay? Today's video doesn't have anything to do with CNC. It could in the abstract, but not really. Um, he is doing a, he, his video today is on creating a stained glass window for the Madonna University Heritage Center. And there's a link to it in the description box of this video right now. That'll be at two o'clock Pacific, five o'clock Eastern. And when you see this stained glass that Michael did, you'll understand why I hold this guy in such reverence. I mean, man, it, yeah, that's, that's, it's something that I'm really, really looking forward to. I've seen some pictures, but I can't wait to watch this video this afternoon. Again, that's, uh, there's a link to it in the description, two o'clock Pacific time. Five o'clock Eastern time, and I hope to see you there. Okay, uh, Aaron Hansen has thrown a question in here. How about four by eight sheets of beadboard paneling at 20 bucks a sheet? I believe it or not, I looked at it. I looked at it and I thought seriously about it. And then I thought I will regret putting that up. Um, I this has this is a long-term project. And I would rather wait than half step. In, it does, I don't know if that makes sense, but I would rather wait until the price of materials come down than put something up that I'm going to regret. I looked at drywall. I don't want to go drywall. I really don't. I, I, I'll just wait. I would rather, I would rather wait. <laughs> there are other alternatives out there and believe me, I'm exploring them all. So, but I did look into beadboard paneling and thought about it, considered it very seriously for a, about a year. Um, let's see. Uh, Mario Medina said, I send you an email for the video. You're looking at it, Stephen Forsyth. Thank you guys very much. Uh, I will go find this video. I just had to remember who it was. I will go find this video. Um, and I will post a link to it in the description. It just, I couldn't for the life of me, 
think of who did it. And my history wasn't helping. So Russell Faraday, give me about 10 minutes after the, uh, after this, after we end the live stream and I will put a link to that video in the description of this video. Thank you very much, Mario. I really, really appreciate that. So let's see here. Oh, wow. It looks like we are out of questions already. Boy, it's only been, we've only been uh, on for about not quite 30 minutes. If you have any questions at all, I'm kind of tap dancing here. Um, let's see. Jim Dockrell says lumber prices are predicted to fall another 60%. Yeah. Um, now that the speculators are uh, kind of over their thirst for, uh, you know what I mean? Um, the, it's, it, it's coming back down to impossible now. I mean, I could throw numbers around. The futures for uh, a thousand board foot hit a record high of $1,670. $1,670 for a thousand board foot. For the previous two years, it ran somewhere in between 325 dollars and $400 per thousand board foot. That'll show you how much it, it spiked. And well, it's back down. It closed Friday at 897 per thousand board foot. So it is, it's coming back down, but it's going to take a few months for retail prices to catch up. Demand is slowing down as well because we have had, we have reached the point where people are saying it's too expensive. I'm not buying it. And I mean, I know here locally, uh, new construction has really slowed down. Uh, contractors are canceling contracts. Um, the builders and buyers are backing out of contracts because they just can't afford it. You know, when you talk about eight to $12 for a two by four, if you're buying one or tw one or two, okay, fine. It's expensive, but you can swallow that when you're buying a few thousand, that makes a huge dent in the wallet and drives the price of everything up. Well, we've reached that point here locally where folks are saying no way. So, you know, it's it they are coming down but just by a few cents. So, uh, let's see here. Um Bob Health Bridal wants to know what's your plan for the interior walls? That's kind of what I'm discussing right now. I I've, I've got a couple of ideas but I'm not ready to give it away yet. Um, and I'll, this will dovetail in here with Jim Johnson ask, what did you not like? Why did you not like the beadboard paneling? It's too thin. That's my issue with it. I, I don't plan on attaching anything to the ceiling that is so heavy. It would cause an issue, but I want the option to be able to hang something from the ceiling and that. Um, even if it's hardboard beadboard, it's only about three sixteenths of an inch thick. And that's just, that's just way too thin to do. And that's also why I don't want to go with drywall. I, I do want the, I do want the option to be able to attach something to the ceiling, camera mounts, etc. Not necessarily anything that's heavy. But I don't want to use drywall anchors and I don't want to try to secure something to a thin material like that. Uh, you know, if if I'm going to run a, a track to run a camera rig on, I can attach it to half inch plywood because it's not a lot of weight. And I also do plan on hanging uh, dust collection pipe from that duct work from that ceiling and which isn't heavy, but it still needs something a little bit more robust than that thin paneling. So 
Um, let's see. Michael Mazalik wants to know how's the progress on the secret Vectric user group meeting coming along. I'll chat with you about that in a PM a little bit later on. I have a couple of questions for you, but it's progressing. It's progressing. The only thing is I have to do things early in the morning because my shop is not air conditioned. So I have to go out early in the morning and I have a couple hours window that I can work. Then it gets too warm. I have to shut everything down. So uh, let's see. Jeff Rozak wants to know, how do you get perfectly spaced text? Well, let me. Um, oh, I can't do that. Let me bring up Aspire and we will start a project. Then I'll, I'll screen share here. Um, come on, start up. Okay, create a new file. There we go. Okay, and then I will screen share and go from here. There we are. Now I'll bring up Aspire. Now to get evenly spaced text, it depends on what you're doing. There are several ways of doing it, but you generally speaking, just going into the draw text window, you will have to do a little bit of kerning on your own. Or, I'm waiting for all my fonts to load here. Come on. Boy. See, this is one of the problems with having too many fonts. Uh, let me choose something. Um, let's go with Acklin here. And I'll just type my name, close, and I'll hit uh, F9 to center up. And enlarge it so you can see it. Now, to get perfectly evenly spaced text, it, it, it all depends on the project. There are several ways of going about it. But generally speaking, you can either use guides. Whoops, I got to close out of that. You can either use guides and then align each character individually. If you're attempting to put them in specific locations, you can either enter the letters one by one or convert to curves, then move them around individually. Or Control Z to undo that. Control Z to undo the convert for curves. Or you can do your text spacing. I find that generally speaking, um, perfectly spaced text doesn't look right. Now, if it's mandatory for the project, like if you're doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G for like uh, columns, naming columns or something to that like that then i generally do them one at a time like i'll drag a guide out to uh four and then oops i can't do that let's get back to standard selection mode i'll drag a uh, guide out to the four inch mark then space some um, relative to guide let's say i want oh 10 guides um half inch apart now let's go with a quarter inch apart and boom there's my 10 guides well that was actually way too small anyway i can no, I would need to convert to curves first. Come on, Mark, you've done this before. There we go. Convert to curves. Select that character and then move it to where I want. 
I have my guide right here. I can then select this one, move it so where this is exactly a quarter inch away, like so, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It as far as perfectly even spacing, there are other ways of going about it. Let me get rid of this and go to view guidelines delete all guides i could draw a rectangle select it go into my text box let this load again let's go with uh acklin again and i'll type my name now, that's going to fill the box, but it's not guaranteed to put perfectly even spacing in between the letters. You see what I'm getting at? There may be another automatic way of doing that, but I find that by if I want to place these letters in a specific place, I'll do the M, then move it to where I need it stop then come back oops no nope. come in and do the a ah boy you're really goofing up today boy then do the a close move it to where i need it etc on down the line personally if i'm going to do a heading like i'm talking about columns or a clock face or something like that i will do them individual letters and place them where i need to place them at the time so boy oh man i don't believe i just did that i just did all of that without screen sharing i apologize for that um, but yes, basically I do, um, I do place them one at a time. I don't believe I wasn't screen sharing. I apologize for that guys. <sighs> Guidelines, um, individual rectangles, and then fill in using the rec text within a vector. Um, sometimes it's easier to do that. Create a rectangle about the size of the piece of text you want for each individual character, and then go back and uh, put the uh, text within each one. Wow. I apologize for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Norm Peterson, is there some way to make different files for fonts so you can load faster by selecting a group of font? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. Um, you can adjust how many. Okay. On version, I believe it's 10.0 and later, you have, when you go into your uh, draw text or draw text within a vector tool, and you click on the font list, the last five fonts are listed at the top. The last five fonts that you used are listed at the top. You can go into program options and change that number to where it's like the last 10 or what have you. But because the fonts have to not only be downloaded into onto your computer, they also have to be installed into the operating system so that it's available for use for every uh, program on, on your computer that uses fonts. I don't believe the operating system will allow you to group fonts like that into separate files because it installs the font on your computer, much like you would install a program. So I don't believe there's a way to uh, segregate them into styles like uh, vertical text versus script text versus uh, serif text or sans serif text or what have you, or fonts rather, not text. So 
Um, let's see. Russell Faraday. Text spacing is an art form that only traditional sign writers knew how to apply. Um, to a point, yes. Printers get into kerning a little bit as well. Graphic artists do as well. Um, but I find just me personally, I think perfectly even spacing between letters looks fake to me. It, um, it, it kind of looks like an old typewriter because an old typewriter had to print that way because it was a mechanical key that came up and tapped through the ribbon onto the paper. Um, one of the things about the fonts that we're using, true type fonts or what have you, they're what's known as a superscript font in that the spacing between the letters is not rigid. They can be adjusted closer or further apart, depending upon the program. So true type fonts are superscript fonts. And you'll notice if you look at something that was typewritten, there would be a large gap between, say, an I and an O. Because the I, the actual key that comes up and hits that typewriter ribbon is skinnier than the O, but there's still a little bit of a space there. And it's because of that mechanical operation, that physical piece that hits that ribbon, it, it can't be adjusted. Well, with a computer, it can be. So I do but yeah, I don't know of any way of uh, grouping fonts together like that. So let's see. Um, e cabinets tips and tricks wants to know how is Dave doing? Dave is doing very well. And thank you for the opportunity to segue. Um, there is a link in the description of this video to a GoFundMe that was set up to help Dave recover and pay some bills after his uh, heart attack and quadruple bot bypass. He's just shy of halfway to his goal and he would really appreciate some help. Uh, he is doing very well. He's able to get back into the shop in a limited fashion. He can't go slinging around sheets of plywood or anything like that. Uh, they did whack open his chest. Uh, cut through the uh, sternum. So um, it's, but um, he could use your help if you have already donated. I thank you sincerely. Um, he's a good friend of mine and um, we try to help our friends whenever we can. So, uh, but he is doing well. Thank you for asking. Uh, Dave Blackburn says, have you thought about a split system, heat and air? Yes, I have. And I'm weighing that, um, a mini split for, I don't need a lot. Yeah. Uh, like I say, it's less than 200 square feet and something around nine to 12,000 BTU would keep that nice and toasty in the winter and nice and cool in the summer. But um, I'm at the point now where I've got to save my pennies for this, that, and the other. So it is a consideration. Right now, I own a little portable air conditioner, room air conditioner, made for a room 300 square feet. So that's what I'm going to use right now. Uh, but down the road, maybe next year, a mini split might be an option. But right this minute, no, it's not an option but I am looking into them. And if any mini split manufacturers out there want to reach out to me, <laughs> feel free. I'm a happy, I'd be a happy camper if you did. Hashtag not sponsored yet. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to, okay, wait a minute here. Um, Let's see, we got a question here that may or may not uh, be CNC related. What's the easiest joinery for the beginner to learn to build storage drawers? Five-eighths ply. 
The easiest to learn is glue and butt joints and uh, apply the uh, drawer bottom to the bottom. I didn't say it was the strongest. I said it's the easiest. Um, basically, go to YouTube. I haven't done any videos on this at all. Basically, go to YouTube and search for storage drawers or drawer construction. And you should find a ton of videos. So let's see. Ben Warren had a question up here. Looking at purchasing a new surfacing bit. What is the advantage or disadvantage of a three wing or straight bit? Um, well. Okay. Uh, it's going to. Your question is multifaceted. Generally speaking. When you say three wing, I'm assume you're talking about a uh, the type like Amana and Whiteside make that have the replaceable carbide cutters, and there are usually three or four cutting edges with the replaceable or unscrew it and turn it carbide cutter on it. The advantage of that is you can get them up to, I think, three to three and a half inches in diameter. It will require a half inch or larger in some cases, call it. So make sure about your shank diameter before you order one. The advantages are obvious. You can cover more territory with that surfacing bit than you could with, say, a quarter inch end mill. The disadvantage is you may need a larger collet. They're expensive. We're talking about, you know, starting at a little over a hundred dollars and going up into two or possibly three. Um, they require a fairly healthy router to spin something like that. A variable speed router, because with that diameter of a bit, you'll need to turn down your RPMs. So those are some of the disadvantages. Um, now when you say three wing, that would translate over to, um, to, uh, flutes. And for something like that, a three or four flute bit is just fine because you're not talking about, you're not going to be drilling holes with it. For instance, a two flute or three flute or even a four flute surfacing bit because you're spinning at a lower rpm will be just fine it the other disadvantage to a larger bit like that is the tram on your router or spindle needs to be as close to perfect as you can get it a smaller bit is a little bit more forgiving if you're out by you know, half of a thousandth or a thousandth of an inch in tilt or nod. A smaller diameter bit's a little bit more forgiving, but a larger bit, that little bit of nod or tilt is going to be magnified to where it's going to look like you're digging real deep, leaving deep shingles or shingling in your uh, surfacing. Um, a smaller bit takes more time, obviously, because you're covering less territory. The bit that I use, and I'll put a link to it in uh, the description of this video, I'll have to go find it, uh, is not a surfacing bit at all. Sorry about that. I just whacked the microphone. It is sold as a straight mortising bit but it's an inch and a quarter diameter. It uses a quarter inch shank. It's made by Freud. And I'll put a link to it in the description of this video as soon as we get done here live. And it will be an affiliate link. There's a disclaimer down in the uh, uh, link to the video. Uh, excuse me, link to that disclaimer down in the description of this video. So, um, let's see. Okay, that appears to be everything. Hopefully, I got the 
questions taken care of. I can turn that one off. I had to scroll back up to it. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, looks like I've got all the questions caught up with. You know, uh, Ben, when it comes down to it, it's I, I have no real brand loyalty when it comes to bits. It all comes down to, A, the size of your machine, the larger the uh, area that you're going to have to surface, the larger you might want to go with your bit. But I think personally for me, that inch and a quarter bit works just fine. And my the surface of my table that I did is uh, 51 by 34. So, you know. It was, uh, it, it took a little while, but not really that long. And, you know, let's face it, you're only taking off a few thousandths of an inch at a time. So let's see. I like the repurpose horse comb, Mark. Um, yeah, that, believe it or not, suicidal at all times. Thank you very much. Believe it or not, that's what the pros use. And down here at the local Grange Co-op, the local farm and ranch store, it was $7. So, you know, <laughs> you can order them online. They're seven, eight bucks plus shipping. But I went and got one here locally. Took me 15 minutes. But yeah, that spring curry comb works a treat. I'm here to tell you what. Of course, it's one of those single use tools. I'm never going to use it again once this is all. In fact, it is finished. So it's going to get put away in the drawer with all the tools that I bought to do a job that I no longer need. So what can I say? But it is what the pros use. And in fact, mine was the same brand that the pro uh, Abraham used when he was here. Okay. I think we're going to go ahead and end this. It's been 50 minutes. Um, I've been tap dancing like Michael Flatley out here. So uh, <laughs> as I'm waiting for questions to come in, I meant what I said in that video earlier, folks. Um, excuse me. Without all of you, none of this, absolutely none of this would be possible. And I appreciate it. Everybody who has given me a super chat here during the live Q&A or used the super sticker, everybody who has donated through the links down in the description, I appreciate you guys more than you will ever know. Everybody who has watched one of my videos, everybody who has recommended one of my videos, everybody who has shared one of my videos, you guys are who make it possible. And Martin, if you're still watching, thank you. I know nobody from... Uh, Gail Construction is watching right now. Thank you as well. Um, this community, I'm serious when I say it, this community has shown me more love than I will ever, ever be able to repay. And I sincerely thank you for that. And, um, you know, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to keep doing this as long as uh, you folks want to watch. And I really, really appreciate the heck out of everybody who has supported me in this. And that's all of you. So um, next week will be open Q&A. So if you have any open Q&A questions, if you come up with something between now and then, uh, by all means, uh, I will try to take care of them and I'll be a little bit more prepared next time. A lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, so I hope to see you this afternoon at two o'clock Pacific five Eastern for Michael Mazalik's premiere. I'm real eager to see how he, how he did that stained glass window. Um, I have a tiny bit of experience with stained glass, in high school 40 some odd years ago, but I can't wait for this video. This is going to be cool. Um, see you there and I will see you next week. Thank you again. And bye y'all.